the first rejuvenating breath of freedom. With the humility of a wounded sparrow, I genuflect to my noble deliverer. Uh, it was no big deal, dude. Yes! <clears throat> After all, it was I who let you out. Why, you brazenly avaricious, duplicitous, larcenous ursine! Now hold on! <laughs> One more, perhaps? At least. Please do afford me the sublime honor of enjoying your visitation in the nearest future. Yeah, sure. Nostalgia Scott coming to you guys with part 9 of Spyro Reign or Year of the Dragon part of the Reignited Trilogy. So we have to take the Whirly gig now and I apologize if I sound a little different. I have some kind of like either severe allergies or like some kind of sinus infection. So today we're going to be taking the Whirly gig and going to Evening Lake and we all know that we're going to get ambushed by a boss because that's just how it works. So, I assume we're also going to run into Sergeant Bird, because we ran into Sheila last time. You bumbling, idiotic, worthless fool! I asked you to carry out one simple task, and you fail me! I should have known better than to rely on a child. But don't worry about it. I'll deal with them now. These eggs can't be worth all this trouble. Without the dragons, the magic in this world will wither away. Without magic, I'll die. And so will your ever-slim chance of becoming a sorceress! Now, watch how a real sorceress dispatches her enemies. Release me from this cage, you merciless miscreants! How would you like some dragon for lunch? <laughs> Why, if I had my club, you'd all be in for... Uh... And there you go, that's, uh, Spike. I believe his name's Spike. Scorch is, I think, the third boss. Hey, Sergeant Bird. My tactical instincts told me the sorceress would attack you here, so I flew in to help out. It seems my rocket launchers don't affect this creature, but I can assist you by dropping ammunition. Now get in there and fight the good fight! Oh uh, yes, the good fight against probably, in my opinion, the hardest boss in the original. Like, not so much in there. You destroyed my ammunition, you fool. Okay, we're gonna wait for him to shoot, and then we're going to launch it. I like most bosses in this game, he has a pretty decent sized health bar, but they all take the same amount of hits, I think, except for the final boss. Now we'll crack the ground, and then now Sergeant Bird will drop the ammunition. Ammunition, ammunition, yeah, juice. This one is a flame breath power up, so you gotta get close. You can only hit him once, despite the flame actually lasting. You know, a decent amount of time. <clears throat> and he can also get the power up too, so be careful. Also, Circle didn't, or B didn't do anything there for a second. I forgot, I'm not on PlayStation controller anymore. Oh, great. He got the power up. Run. Oh, once he gets that power up, though, it's really hard to do anything. Plus, it stays forever. And to us, it's just a homing missile. It's not even really a unique attack. And guess what? You're dead there, Spike. And the egg we get here is Monique. I actually went to school to Monique. Why does that look like a boy, though? Okay. Whatever. 
Anyways, that's another level 100% complete. Also, I can't tell if this is like a swamp or what. I think it's supposed to be a swamp. This would make sense going to a lake, right? Anyways, on to Evening Lake, which is actually a really pretty world. And though it does have my least favorite level in the entire game. Which, not saying it's like a terrible level, it's just a lot more difficult than other levels. And we arrive. And I believe we immediately get, yeah, we don't even get a chance to move. Listen to me, dragon. Spyro, this is serious now. The sorceress is planning a trap for you, and if she catches you, believe me, you don't want to know what she's going to do. Look, I promise to take good care of the rest of the eggs. I mean it. Just take Hunter and go back home before... Before... I can't say it. Just go. You notice that she's kind of having a change of heart, like she's acting different now. Yeah, th this is going to come back to actually, you know, affect the story. So just pay attention to that. Also, same amount of eggs and gems here as any other home world. So you're going to have the three, the 400 plus the five eggs. I don't know why they didn't just add six eggs here. I think because technically the total would be screwed up. But whatever. Um, Let's see what we got going on up here. Gems, another sparks level. Can't go back to... Can't do this one until we get to the next world, though we can technically go to the, do the other Sparks level. And we got our first egg over here, which is Hannah Montana. Nice to meet you, Hannah Montana. Alright, um, the next skill point is in here, which I actually managed to do fairly easily. Uh, when I was just playing, I think it was when my niece was over one time. She really likes watching this Spyro game, as well as like, uh, House Flipper. I don't know why she likes those two games specifically, but she likes when I play those. She gets entertained by them. And, uh, yeah, it was super easy and I got it. But yet, when I tried it for, like, an original Let's Play back on my Let's Play channel a long time ago before it became, um, a Pokemon channel, yeah. So this is Fireworks Factory. This is the level you can't 100% here. There's always going to be one level except for the final world where you can't 100%. And that's this world's level. Just like last uh, world was, was Bamboo Terrace that you couldn't complete. Here's money bags with our buddy that's Bentley the Yeti. It's funny because technically they're all animal buddies except for him because he's a Yeti. I don't know if those are considered animals or like more like people. Frozen Altars is technically the first level of the world but probably not the first one we're going to go to because if you don't want to screw the uh, screw up getting 100% on things, I really recommend going to levels that require Hunter. So, one of them being the Speedway right here, Honey Speedway, which is a really cool Speedway. Um, this level you don't need to go to yet because there's no Hunter, but that's Charmed Ridge, which is like a Jack and the Beanstalk slash, uh, I guess, Romeo and Juliet style level. So this is like a bunch of fairy tales and Shakespearean things kind of shoved into one story. Which is kind of cool. And also, why did that... Like, it stopped my charge. Also, are these like all tens? They are. There really isn't a lot of gems here. There's just a few big gems and that's about it. I keep hearing that whale creak. Is this a like creak? Oh, I got eaten by a whale. No. Oh, look, there's an egg in the whale known as Jonah Hill. Thank you, Jonah. I appreciate it. Why are there barnacles in here? Also, why do we see the bones? That's not how whales work. Also, I love how, like, his mouth looked more normal there, like the inside of it, with, like, no bones, but then when you're inside, it's like that. I believe in the original, though, there were bones, too, so that's not, like, specifically part of the Reignited trilogy. This is part of the weird design that this game did in general. Anything on the ship? I love how there's like nothing up here. But now I think we're pretty much done in the underwater section. Wait, no, we forgot this little spot right here, which is another one of the eggs. And then the last two eggs are actually not even in the water. So let's grab this egg. 
We have Stuby. I, I don't even know if Stuby's a real name. Has anyone ever known anybody with the name Stuby before? I certainly haven't. That's kind of a weird name. Not gonna lie. Like, it'd be cool to know if somebody was named that, because, like, I've never heard it, you know, used before. Oh, yeah, and this is the invincibility power up. Funny thing is, I don't think this power up was actually ever used again in this game. This game isn't big on power ups, it's big on challenges. Stuart Little. Why are they all wearing hats all of a sudden? All these dragons are just wearing hats. Thank you for the one up. And thank you for all the cash money. No, why did you kill a frog in the process, you stupid boob? Oh, well, we got more gems up here, so that's good. I hear a howling cat, which is annoying. And Oh, man, we forgot gems. So we got Ted from my TED Talk. Or Ted Bundy, I don't know. Now, where are these gems? Directly under us? Really? Oh, down there, I see them. Ugh. That's actually not what I saw, but okay, cool. <clears throat> Why did the whale eat me from here? I wasn't even in range. They increased the range of it in this. <clears throat> Pardon me if I have to clear my throat a bit, because it's all... Just, it's not even like there's anything in there, it's just destroyed. Anyways, we got this guy to free. <laughs> the sorceress has a real prize on her hands here. It took two dozen Rhinox to capture this dim-witted furball, so you better believe he's not going to get out cheap. Yeah, a thousand gems. That's... that's... that's just dirty. Where are you getting all this money, Spyro? <laughs> it's not just lying around on the ground, is it? Uh, is it? Ah, what do I care? It's mine now! It is laying on the ground. <clears throat> The first rejuvenating breath of freedom. With the humility of a wounded sparrow, I genuflect to my noble deliverer. Uh, it was no big deal, dude. Yes. <clears throat> After all, it was I who let you out. Why, you brazenly avaricious, duplicitous, larcenous ursine. Now hold on. <clears throat> <clears throat> One more, perhaps? At least. Please do afford me the sublime honor of enjoying your visitation in the nearest future. Yeah, sure. And next we have Bentley's Outpost, which is actually a pretty fun, easy, but short level, so we can fit it in here. We can probably also do the Sparks level, or just go back and finish backtracking to... Ah, eh, whatever. It's always the same thing. It's go and clear out uh, their homeworld. So, there are 600 gems here now, so all levels will have 600. There's also a skill point for pushing a box off a cliff, which is super easy, and I'll show you exactly where to do it. That little guy there is Bartholomew, or I guess Bart, if you want to give him a nickname. Uh, he's your brother. And for some reason, he's super tiny. And he's always super tiny. And <clears throat> I didn't get to attack you. <clears throat> so you can destroy these totems by, you know, smacking them three times. And then they usually have something on top. Whether it be good or bad, there's still something up there. And a lot of the gems are just in those. Like, it's not very difficult at all. Did you not eat the... Oh, I guess you did eat the health. All right, let's talk to Bartholomew here. If you use your spin move to deflect the snowball into the gong, I bet we can make the roof cave in. Yep, so you just press square or X. And for some reason, it doesn't... There we go. And that's going to break the ice down, and now you can get across. And that's how you get the eggs. And we got Brian Adams. Actually, that's the wrong Brian. We've had the other Brian in the game. That's two Brian's in one game. There's two Brian's and <clears throat> two Ryan's in the same game, which is really weird. Come on, spin attack. 
Thank you. And there's a bunch more gems. Now we gotta kill this seal too. Arf. Hey, you came to the perfect spot. To die, that is. And even more money. Oh, that one had less big gems, I guess. Yeah, see what I mean? There's sometimes enemies up top, so you just do the exact same thing. Just keep smashing the attack button. <clears throat> smashing? I meant mashing, but that also works, because you're smashing with the attack, so... Whatever, right? I can't remember. I think it's one of the gems falls. Yeah, it does. So yeah, actually, two do. So grab the health, because we have to fall down here anyway. At least we're making our money back pretty quick after money bags takes it, you know? <clears throat> also, Bentley's kind of weird, because in this version of the game, he's like in a... he's not perfectly lined up with the camera. He's kind of off to the right. Another gong. Eh, another gong. We don't need to listen to that, do we? And boom. What's this one gonna do? Oh, snowball. And the effect actually looked way better on the original. I don't know how they messed that up, but oh well. And you just push this over the edge, and there's the skill point. Easy peasy lemon squeezy skill point. And there's our second egg already. We got Charlie Sheen. Oh, that's a nerd. Get lost, nerd. Alright, more totem destruction. That's kind of mean. Also, why are there totems? I thought Yetis were like Himalayan. And like Bigfoot was like North American. I'm kind of confused. Oh yeah, I forgot about the seal over here. Can I just kill you with that? Thank you. I don't want to kill you the other way. I want to kill you like that. I, I appreciate smashing a seal of- <gasps> wait a minute, we're clubbing seals. Luckily they're not baby seals. That would be kind of dark and morbid. Oh, this is lots of health. Like I said, like even if you take damage in this level, it's not that hard of a level. It's just kind of like the better of like the animal buddy levels if you just want a breather. And then for these, you just push them to the middle, and then Bent or uh, both you and Bartholomew can get across. I was gonna say Bentley can get across, but technically Bart there can get across too. Mm hmm. At least the music is pretty ca nice. Like, I actually really do enjoy the music to Bentley's levels. Alrighty. Now we just have to hop across it, and we should have enough to 100% the level. It's honestly actually really hard to miss gems here. It's one of the very few levels where you generally don't really miss anything. Just because of how simplistic and easy the level really is. All those greens, but then they give you a 25 in there. Talk about rich. And this should be it, right? Yep, that's all 600 gems and the third egg. Thanks, bro. Here's a little something for your rock collection. Uh, I don't think Eric is a rock, but thanks, Bart. <laughs> all right, and then he goes home to that weird house, and then we just leave by floating out. Right. Anyways, that's 600 gems to our collection. We're down 400, but... Oh well. Now we can just teleport to Bamboo Terrace and go do the Bentley part of that level, and I think that'll be the end of the episode after that. So, we gotta go here and go to Bamboo Terrace. Yep. I was gonna say, did I say that right? No, it's Bamboo Terrace. The funny thing is, there's less loading going from a complete different world to like a level like this than there is going to a boss fight which i think is funny because cutscenes also happen midway through like an act so I, I don't know i don't know what causes the uh the loading times to change in this game but there we go we have bentley's level now ah a fine day for a bit of a walk i was just heading to the top of my favorite hill and then I think you only use Bentley one other time in this game, and that's in... No, wait, no, you use him twice. But one of them doesn't even count, like, as a Bentley thing. It's just for two eggs, and it's not your typical Bentley, uh... Um, oh my god, that's a lot of barking. 
Like, you don't um, do the traditional Bentley style gameplay. You just do, um, like, a boxing match, which is totally different, which is kind of cool and all. It's actually kind of funny because Bentley and the um, next, uh, like, buddy you unlock actually have unique gimmicks to their gameplay, while the other two, Sergeant Bird, it's like, Sergeant Bird, yeah, he flies. But he's still just generic level guy. But the uh, the the definitely in the next one, not gonna spoil who it is, actually have unique gameplay in a lot of their uh, challenges. But I think Bentley's probably the most underutilized character. Like he he only returns in a hero's tale, and you only talk to him. You don't actually get to play as him. I'm pretty sure he's the only friend that you unlock that isn't playable in any other game. Because Sergeant Bird is in some of the Game Boy games. Oh, I thought I could hit that, but I couldn't. Um, Sheila and somebody else are in the Game Boy game I'm playing. And did every single one of these enemies just hit me? Like, seriously? What kind of nonsense is this game? I do not appreciate being smoked that many times. Also, the game could really give me some health up here. Oh, there was health over- Ah, oh, there's the life. We'll go get this life over here, which will at least give us full health. And kaboom. I was about to say, like, where the heck is Sparks? Um, TNT. Wait, how did that hit me? That didn't even hit a surf- there's literally nothing you can do to avoid the TNT, by the way. You have no attack that actually deals with it. Also, why didn't this guy run forward like other enemies? That's weird. You ever notice that? He just doesn't run forward? Alright, and then we can smash this. And it's all 500 gems. So, now we can talk to Brubeck. Once again, a name that I have... No idea if anyone's actually named Brubeck or not. Alright, and then we can just exit the area, and then we can leave the level. Because we actually do need to stay in this world, because we do have the Sparks level to do. Which we'll probably do in the next episode, obviously, because we're already 22 minutes into the video. There we go! We almost made all our gems back from paying money bags. We need about... Well, we need 200 more. So yeah. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, join the Discord and Patreon in the links below, and I will see you guys next time as we go to the next Sparks level and probably Lost Fleet, which I'm not looking forward to that level, but still. Bye bye